White Lotus are the second faction within DMZ and in this guide I'm going to give you hints and tips on how to complete every single mission for the faction in all five tiers. If you find this video useful don't forget to like and subscribe and let's get started. Lots of the missions that I'm going to talk about today are much easier with a squad, so if you don't have a squad, consider finding one using the sponsor of today's video, Gamerlink. It's a free app available on iOS and Android, and it helps you to find groups in over 350 games, and you can set up a post on there saying exactly what you want to do in DMZ, and you can say whether you want people to have a mic or not, and stuff like that, and then they can get in touch with you and play together. It is free to download, there is a paid version that you can use to just get rid of the ads on it, basically, and let you bump your posts a bit more often, but if you just want to use it to find groups you can do it completely for free and you'll support the channel there'll be a link in the description below or you can just look on your app store for game link the first mission is called world traveler and the first two missions can actually be completed together very very easily so the first one says traveled six different points of interest in one deployment so all you need to do is hop into a vehicle and go to six different named locations so the places you can see the names of on the map and it'll actually say their name when you enter the area just underneath the compass and you'll notice the progress on the mission progress marker once you've gone to six of those different locations that's completed the second mission, Convenience, can be done at the same time. This asks you to first of all fuel and repair vehicles at five gas stations and then extract seven gas cans. So as you're going to all of the different locations for World Traveler, just make sure you stop at every gas station along the way. You'll be able to pull up, make sure you kill all of the enemies because they will shoot your vehicle and just wait until the vehicle is completely refueled and repaired and then that should trigger the progress for the fuel and repair vehicles at the gas stations and then run into the gas station and you should be able to find one or two two gas cans obviously because of backpack space you even need a large backpack or if you've got a teammate you can do this and have the gas cans split between you but just drive around once you've completed all of world traveler and you've got the fuel and repair vehicles at five gas stations and you've picked up the seven gas cans then you can make your way to an exfil and get out and complete these two missions the next mission badge of honor asks you to acquire a basilisk and it says you can find them at police stations and then kill 13 enemies with headshots now although it says pick them up from something like a police station you can actually take it in as an insured weapon and i strongly suggest you do this because then you can put some kind of hollow or red dot sight on it which will make getting the headshots so much easier you can get the headshots on normal ai it doesn't have to be operators or anything like that so this should be fairly easy just take the basilisk in as an insured weapon set up to get easy headshots and then get your 13 headshots on any of the AI at the beginning of the game where they don't even have helmets or anything. The fourth mission, Health Conscious, just asks you to loot a medicine cabinet and then extract nine stims and then extract six bandages. This is super easy. The medicine cabinets are all over the place. They're often found in bathrooms. They're on the wall, they're white. They've got the like green cross on them. Extracting nine stims is super easy. You can just put stims in your inventory when you're sorting out your loadout as well as a munitions crate. And then if you drop the stims and then use the munitions crate, that'll give you an extra two. So now you'll have four and you can keep doing that with more munitions crates if you need to find them. Munitions crates only cost a thousand dollars for many of the buy stations that have them. To be honest, you probably don't need to do that. Like finding stims and bandages is super easy. There's a bunch of them. There are even hospital buildings that have loads of them inside. You'll probably be able to get this done in one go fairly simply. The next mission is called Demolitions and this asks you to acquire a destroy supplies contract, complete the destroy supplies contract and then open a safe. So these are the contracts where you've got to bomb two things, you can pick them up using this icon and then it will show you two areas where you need to complete them. All you have to do is go over there, kill the enemies, do be aware they'll probably be quite armoured enemies, they're quite tough. But once you've killed them, go and interact with the bomb. And then although the mission tells you you have to defend it, you actually don't. You can just go plant the other bomb, kill the enemies on there, plant that one, and then just leave. And eventually the bombs will go off. Once both of the bombs have gone off and the contract is complete, it will highlight nearby safes on the map. Now, since the last update, we've actually completed a few of these contracts where no safes have been highlighted at all. I'm not sure if it's because other players have already done them or what's happened, but you might have to do a couple until you find some of the safe markers on the map. Then you can go open a safe, you just interact with it, you put a drill on it, you have to defend it for a bit. A helicopter will come in and drop a few AI nearby, so it's quite nice to have a Semtex ready to just throw up into that helicopter, and then you should complete it as soon as that safe is open. The next mission, Fully Encumbered, is very simple, just asks you to extract with a full backpack. I don't think it matters what type of backpack you have, but if you've got a large backpack, then just make sure you fill every single slot in it. But once you've filled every slot, and you can do it with just different keys if you want or something like that, then extract as normal and that one should complete. 
Then once you've completed 5 out of the 6 missions for this tier, you should unlock Flight Recon which is the story mission for tier 1. This one is a little bit more involved and asks you to first of all land a light helicopter at the Hafid Port Helipad, then download the light helo's flight path data, then extract the light helicopter's flight path data. This is a lot easier than it sounds, but the tricky part is actually finding a helicopter. Normally in most games of DMZ, only two helicopters spawn, so just keep on playing until you get reasonably close to a helicopter, head over to it, hopefully you'll be able to beat the other players to it. Be aware some AI does spawn around a helicopter but they don't have much armor or anything like that so they should be easy to deal with. Just make sure you don't accidentally shoot the helicopter too much. And then go fly the helicopter to this particular helipad, it's the one sticking out in the sea. You go fly there, land on it, try to be careful when you're landing. If you haven't flown a helicopter in this game before, if you hit the ground too hard it will cause a lot of damage to it. Then once you've landed get out of the helicopter and you should have a new prompt on the side of it that says download the flight path data. Do that and then just pick up the helicopter again and fly to an extraction and then just extract and that mission will complete and you have finished tier 1 of White Lotus. Then the first mission of tier 2 bombing run is actually quite a difficult one, especially if you're trying to solo this. So the requirement is for you to X-film with 6 killstreaks in one deployment. Now killstreaks are pretty hard to find in DMZ, you don't find them as easily as you do in Battle Royale. But probably the best way to get them is just to buy them from buy stations and they're $12,000. So I would suggest just doing all of the normal things you do to get lots of money. So do the radiation contracts, do the sabotage contracts and open the safes until you have $72,000 and by opening the safes and in the radiation things you might get a few kill streaks. But anyway you're going to need 72 grand if you're going to buy all of them yourself. Go to a few buy stations to buy them, it might be that you're going to have to hit up like three different buy stations and then exfil as quickly as you can. This is a really really difficult challenge and it might take a while. The next mission is much easier, it's called Bagum and Tagum and you need to loot and extract four enemy dog tags and loot and extract two pieces of Black Mouse Intel from Rohan Oil. So first of all the Black Mouse Intel, really easy to find, just go to Rohan Oil and loot absolutely everything. Normally it'll be in containers but sometimes it'll just be lying around, it just looks like a big piece of paper. So make sure you pick up those two and as soon as you've got them you can just extract with them. You don't have to do these at the same time, same with the dog tags, you can just do one in a mission and then extract and then go back and do the other one it saves progress so that makes it much easier. The dog tanks are a bit trickier because obviously you have to kill players. I strongly suggest you wipe entire teams and then take their dog tanks because as soon as you pick up an enemy dog tag it will show the rest of their team pretty much where you are like the general area you're in. So you can just leave this mission on and do it as you happen to come across enemies and kill them because sometimes you'll run into enemies at exfil and stuff like that. Or if you specifically want to get this mission done, just do one of the bounty ones, the hunt squad contracts, and then you can go chase some enemies down. You'll know when you finish the whole team off because that's when the contract will complete. You don't have to do it in one exfil, so don't rush. Just if you manage to get some dog tags, exfil, and then you can go back in and try and get some more. The next mission, Intel Executed, is incredibly easy. Activate five UAV towers. Again, you don't have to do it in one deployment, so just go around and activate UAV towers whenever you're near them. And then kill 20 enemies pinged by UAV towers. This can be the AI. Usually the UAV towers are in places where loads of AI are anyway, so just make sure you ping it and then get to killing the enemies. Try not to kill too many enemies before you activate the UAV tower or you're just going to waste them. The next mission I've heard people having problems with, but for me it was quite easy. It's called Death From Above. It says buy a precision airstrike from a shop and then use precision airstrikes to kill 10 enemies. So trying to buy a precision airstrike from a shop is very easy. You just need to find a buy station that has one. It's going to cost 12000 so make sure you get the money for that first. And then to use the precision airstrikes to kill 10 enemies, there's kind of two ways to do this. The easiest way i found is just to wait until a reinforcement helicopter comes in and then use the airstrike on a reinforcement helicopter. You'll probably get like five, six, seven enemies from that, so you can just do that twice to complete it. Or if you go down to Hafid Port, sometimes there'll be loads of enemies running from the port to the ship for some reason. Whenever that happens you can call an airstrike in and kill loads of them while they're on the bridge. For the next mission, Hostage Rescue, you just have to complete a rescue hostage contract, it's the handcuffs icon. These are really easy, they'll just show you where there's a nearby kind of stronghold. You go in there, have to clear out the enemies fairly quickly and deactivate the bomb on the hostage. The hostage is always on one of the highest floors, so if there's a way to get in at the top, do that. And then you can deactivate the bomb and then worry about clearing out the enemies. As soon as you pick up the hostage, then a hostage evac helo will be spawned somewhere nearby, it'll be like a green circle on your map. 
just take the hostage over to there and you have to exfil with that helicopter. So when you get on the helicopter, drop the hostage and then it will take off and take you with it and you'll exfil as normal. The next one is a good one to put on while you're just doing other contracts, hit and run. You just have to run over 16 enemies with a vehicle and then fully refuel and repair a vehicle at a gas station. Running over enemies is easy, loads of the AI just stand in the road and they're very bad at dodging cars, so just run them over as you're driving about. And then when you fully refuel and repair a vehicle at a gas station, you've already done that like five times for one of the previous missions. Just take a car to a gas station and wait until it's fully refueled and repaired. Very, very easy. Once you've done 5 out of those 6 challenges, then you'll unlock the last mission for tier 2 of White Lotus, 2 birds. Quite simple, it just says travel to Al Safra Quarry, kill 18 enemies in a quarry, and then destroy 2 reinforcement helicopters. So, exactly as it says, just go to the quarry and kill loads of AI. It really helps if you have some kind of like locking on rocket launcher, it'll take 2 rockets to kill the reinforcement helicopters. Or you can just use an LMG or something like that and shoot down the helicopters as they turn up. If you can't find any helicopters, they're not spawning for you, try doing any contracts in the quarry that will normally spawn some helicopters for you to take down. Now you're onto tier 3 of White Lotus. So the first mission is fast and strong and this is a really tricky one. It says unlock a stronghold door with a keycard and then clear 3 strongholds each in under 15 seconds after unlocking the stronghold. So I have heard some people say you can just kill all of the enemies while you're outside the stronghold by using drill charges or shooting them through windows in some of the strongholds and then open it up and kill the last few. For us that didn't work. Now I'm not sure if it's been patched since but when we were doing it if we did that at all, it just wouldn't work. It wouldn't consider that stronghold to be cleared for the timer. So what we had to do was just find smaller strongholds on the map, strongholds that are quite small buildings that you don't have to go in and out of to get to all the different floors, and then ideally do this with some friends. If all of you have a stronghold key, you can take different entrances and then just coordinate between yourselves open it all up at once and run in and kill. You're going to need things like Semtex to probably take out the shield guys unless you're really really good at shooting their hands or their feet. Just be prepared for it and you have to do this unbelievably quickly. It'll probably take quite a few tries so don't get dissuaded if you don't manage it one or two times but you will get it done just look for those smaller strongholds. For the next mission, Mall Rat, you have to kill 20 enemies in the Said City Mall without being downed. For this, basically, we went onto the roof of Said City Mall. You can just go up the car park to get up there. And then we shot all of the ones on the roof. They counted for this. And then while we were on the roof, we started shooting the enemies in the mall and just being really careful not to get downed. If you've got something like a sniper rifle, that makes this much easier because you can look down from the roof and kill so many enemies. For the second part of this, kill three operators in the mall, that's a bit trickier because not many people ever go there so again you don't need a moon key or anything like that you can just drop in from the roof but what we did to do this was we went and picked up a weapon case so we went and killed a juggernaut to get the weapon case obviously people want to come and take that weapon case from you so as soon as we did that we went straight to the mall and just waited for people to come there sometimes you can use voice comms and things like that to try and lure people inside but that's how we did it we got three people trying to get the weapon case off us just waited until they came inside and then we killed them for the next mission, Air Supremacy, you're really going to need at least one other person. Preferably have three people in your squad to do this. You have to control three SAM sites simultaneously. So we did this with three people and we just had each of us go to a SAM site. You can fairly easily do the SAM sites by yourself as long as you can deal with one reinforcement helicopter, you know, use an LMG to kill them all before they get out or throw a Semtex in there or something. But just go and do all of the SAM sites at the same time. If there's two of you, obviously you can do one each at the same time and then go and converge to do the last one together. But the SAM site takes quite a long time to capture so if you've got to travel a long way that can be a bit of a pain for the next mission robin hood you have to open three safes in one deployment and then extract with a hundred thousand on a single teammate in one deployment so do those sabotage contracts with the bombs where you plant the bombs on the different objectives that should show you where some safes are and you just open them all up in one deployment there's normally a lot of those contracts and there's a lot of safes so that part shouldn't be hard the next bit extract with a hundred thousand on a single teammate you're probably going to have to do a few safes and a few different sabotage missions, maybe some of those radiation missions as well, until between you you've got 100,000, and then just make sure one person on your squad has all of the money. Make sure one person has over 100k, and then when you exfil, hopefully that one should unlock for you. The key that you get as a reward for this mission, the Satik Poppy Farmer House key, you actually need for another mission, so make sure you keep that one, don't delete it.
The next mission was bugged when we did it. It's called Medical Mule and it might have been fixed by the time you're watching this video. But when we did it, it said deliver 20 stims to the dumpster dead drop northeast of Al Samum Cemetery, deliver 10 emergency rations to the dumpster dead drop of north of Al Samum Cemetery, and then extract 5 self revives. The bug was that you're not actually meant to use that dead drop at all, instead, you're meant to use the one for Said City Mall, which, strictly speaking, is north of the cemetery, but there's another one much closer to the cemetery that people probably would have used. So you just have to get 20 stims again very easy use munitions crates so you just drop your stims that you come in with then use munitions crates to get two more you can just keep buying munitions crates for a thousand each to get all of those stims and drop them all at this dead drop that's just behind the mall for the emergency rations you just kind of have to loot around quite a lot of enemies drop them so you find these fairly frequently and sometimes you find them in the medical cabinets again drop 10 of those back inside city mall and then finally extract five self revives for this one you have to have them in your inventory are not equipped so when you pick up the first self revive it will equip it on you and then any others you pick up will go in your backpack you need to extract with five in your backpack so it doesn't have to be at the same time you can do it over multiple missions but just keep doing that obviously you can buy self revives from buy stations or you tend to just find them in lots and lots of different buildings so keep checking all of those little medical cabinets and you should get this done eventually it will just take a little bit of time for the next mission, Unearthed, you actually need a key. So it's the crane control room key. You can get it as a random drop around the world, or you can get it as a reward from the Black Mouse mission, Quick and Dirty. But it says to acquire a key from the crane control room in our Safra Quarry, unlock the crane building base, and then extract the quarry operations folder in the crane control room. So once you've found a key for the crane control room, make sure you've got this mission equipped and go into DMZ. You'll find a room at the bottom of the crane, unsurprisingly. Open that up and you'll find the quarry operations folder that you need to pick up. Weirdly, in Battle Royale, this folder is here too and you can't do anything with it. Just a bug, I think. But anyway, once you've picked up the quarry operations folder, all you need to do is extract. The reward for this is a Kushak construction warehouse key. You need this key for a later mission, so again, make sure you don't get rid of it. The next mission Pathfinder sounds very hard but it's actually very easy. So first of all you just loot a GPS tracker from the dumpster dead drop near the Said City Mall, the one that you were using for, then travel to every point of interest while carrying the GPS tracker and then extract with it. It sounds really hard but it's super easy. If you can find a helicopter, even easier, just do that. You'll have to refuel it once or twice and you can do that by landing on a petrol station four courts and waiting for it to refuel. But even if you're just doing this in a car, it's very very easy. Just try to do a system. So normally, obviously you're starting Said City Mall we'll just go from there go over to the port and then go around and do all of the ones at the bottom so the flooded village the graveyard the resort and then you can go over to the airport make sure you go up and hit the village and the pass as well go up to the marshes go up to the city you can go right to the edge of the city and then that'll trigger go over to hydroelectric and then just finish all of the ones on the north and west side of the map hopefully timing it so you'll kind of end with an extraction but you will have plenty of time for this it's much easier than it sounds now you're on tier 4 of White Lotus and the missions start getting quite tedious here. There's some that take a very long time to do. So the first one, Cover No Concealment, asks you to snapshot 8 enemies and lock strongholds using a snapshot grenade and then kill 20 enemies and lock strongholds. This took us lots and lots of games. Thankfully you don't have to do it in one deployment. So as it says, just go in with snapshot grenades and some drill grenades and some munitions crates. Go in, uh, ideally find the smaller strongholds and then just throw your snapshots against the wall, throw one, wait until it's triggered and then wait and see some enemies are, then throw drill grenades near those enemies. Some of the strongholds have windows you can see in so you can shoot some of the enemies to get some of those extra kills, but this will just kind of take a long time. It's a little bit tedious, but you'll get it done eventually. It's not difficult, it's just long. The next mission, Omnivore, asks you to kill 35 armoured enemies in Sour Village. That's fairly easy, you can just spend a game in Sour Village, the flooded village at the south of the map, and kill all of them. And then kill 15 enemies wearing riot shields in Almasra City. That's a little bit trickier, but just if every time you go in, you try to make it a point of going and doing a stronghold in Almasra City, or two or three, depending on how many there are, and there's always two enemies with riot shields in those strongholds, so you should be able to get that done. If you can find a post office key, there'll be a few enemies with shields in the post office so you can do that as well or the embassy and then it says kill four enemy helicopters so just like what you did for the quarry wait for enemy helicopters to show up and blow them up using an lmg or maybe a rocket launcher it's fairly simple to do it'll just take a little while to get it done like most of the missions in this tier 
The next mission is called Hero Run, and it sounds tricky, but it's actually quite easy, especially if you're not alone. So it says complete free rescue hostage contracts each in under two minutes. Basically what we did is we had two of us doing this, and so one person went and stood by a hostage contract, so the thing with the handcuffs, and the other person just checked the area for a building that says something like you can't open this unless you're on a contract. That'll be the hostage building. They're buildings that are sometimes strongholds, basically. So they found a door near the top of that because hostages are always at the top of the buildings. And then when the other person picked up the hostage contract, they could immediately go in, defuse the bomb on the hostage and get out with the hostage, often without really killing all of the enemies doing it. Then ideally, the other person would have got a vehicle of some kind that the person carrying the hostage can carry the hostage and jump on the roof because you can't climb in a vehicle while carrying the hostage, but you can just drop them on the roof for a moving vehicle so you can do that and then get to the helicopter sometimes the hostage helicopter will actually spawn right next door so it's not too bad but it doesn't end the timer so you've got two minutes to do this it doesn't end the timer until you've dropped the hostage on the helicopter and the helicopter started taking off you don't have to exfil with them so you can just do this in one game running around saving loads of hostages like an absolute hero the next one is grenade supplier. Very, very easy. Just use munitions crates again. So you have to deliver seven proximity mines or claymores to a dumpster dead drop between Al Safra Quarry and Rohan Oil. So that's the one that's along the train lines. So just go in with proximity mines or claymores in your inventory and some munitions crates and do the same thing we've said a million times where you drop to proximity mines, then use munitions crates to get two more and keep doing that. Keep buying more munitions crates until you've got the required amount. Then you have to deliver five thermite grenades to the dumpster dead drop in Almasra City. That's the one in canals. Very, very easy. Do the exact same thing again. And then extract 13 frag grenades in one deployment. Slightly tricky because you've got to do it all in one go. But if you've got a whole team doing this, this is very, very easy. But again, just bring frag grenades, bring munitions crates, buy a load of munitions crates and just keep on picking up your frag grenades or dropping your frag grenades rather using a munitions crate. And then you can drop those use another munitions crate, drop those, use another munitions crate, drop those, until you've got 13 and you can extract. The next mission, Heavy Gunner, is very easy. You just need to use a HCR-56 and kill 25 enemies at Alshurin Pass and then kill 10 armoured enemies with the HCR-56. So if you can use your insured weapon slot, obviously this is super simple. You just have to kill AI with it. 10 armoured enemies, you know, as the game goes on, it's super easy to find this. But if you're struggling to find armoured enemies, just get some high-value target contracts or do a couple of strongholds and you'll find them no problems at all. And killing the 25 enemies at Alshurin Pass, there's always loads of AI there, so that won't be a problem at all. Just make sure you are using that gun to get the final shots on them. The next mission, Supply Drop. This one's quite a pain because it requires looting a ton of stuff. And one of the things, Toothpaste, actually has been changed in the patch notes to be less frequent. So it's going to be a bit harder than it used to be. But you have to deliver 30 tubes of toothpaste to the dumpster dead drop at Mauser Marsh gas station. I would give a word of warning there. That gas station is absolutely crawling with enemies all the time. So it's quite hard to do. So I would, just whenever you have some toothpaste, whenever you find quite a lot, you know, five or six, then go there, clear out the enemies and drop it off that gas station and try and get out. But it'll take time, it'll take a very long time to get this mission done. But if you want to do it, it's not too hard. Then deliver 18 bottles of purified water to the dumpster dead drop in Almaster City. That's the one in canals. And then deliver 25 canned food to the dumpster dead drop in Almaster City. So all of those is just a matter of finding these while you're looting houses. Mostly you'll find these in. And then taking it there when you've got a few of them. You don't have to do it in one mission, obviously. You can take your time with it. But it will be quite tedious. That's quite a lot of things to find. The next mission, Caved In, used to be bugged, but they fixed it now. So the objectives are enter the Riverside Caves and Satik Caves by boat, loot and extract the smuggling records in Riverside Caves and Satik Caves, and then place sensitive documents at the original location of the smuggling records in the same deployment. So the first thing you actually have to do in this is find some sensitive documents. You can often find these in the bank buildings. There's one by Said City Mall. That's sort of Said City area. Go to the bank there. Just open all the filing cabinets and stuff. Check all the desks. You'll probably find some there or you can open up safes so do a sabotage contract and find some safes you often get sensitive documents then make sure you've picked some up and then get a boat again if you're inside city anyway you can probably find a boat somewhere in the river there then take that all the way to Satik Caves and you actually have to park the boat at the petrol station there, which you're going to need the boat in a second anyway. So just make sure the boat is parked there until that objective is completed. Then you can get out. Be aware that there will be loads of AI in that cave. So make sure you kill them all. There'll probably be someone with an RPG a little bit higher up. So super annoying. But kill all of the AI. And then if you go to the shack at the back, you'll be able to pick up 
the um, documents that you need, the smuggling records. Then there'll be a prompt to drop the sensitive documents. So you can just interact with that, drop sensitive documents, and then take the smuggling records out. I would just get back on the boat and find an exfil point that you can get away with. If something goes wrong, so when you're exfilling, you get killed or something like that, don't worry too much. You don't need the sensitive documents again. You can just go straight back to that shack, pick it up again, pick up the documents, and then try and exfil. So you've got as many attempts as that as you want. You don't have to get the sensitive documents every time. But once you've completed that, you've completed tier four. And now we go on to some really long missions with tier five. So the first mission of tier five deadlines asks you to complete four contracts in under five minutes. This means you have to complete all four contracts in one go in under five minutes, which is pretty tricky. But thankfully, there's a very, very sneaky trick to do this. Basically, when you're on another contract, safes count as completing a mission, which sounds really, really bizarre, but it works. So what you need to do is complete a sabotage contract first to highlight three different safes on your map. And then you need to complete a different mission. We did an intel mission, but you can do whatever you want. And then while you're on that intel mission, so maybe go and find intel first and get to the point where you've just got to upload it, then you need to hit three safes fairly quickly. I did it with a full team, so we had three of us. So two people went and did two other safes and then one of them actually went and did another safe while I just went up and got ready to do the intel. So once all three safes are open and you should be seeing them progress on your mission tracker thing, then you can finish the original contract you're on. So I uploaded the intel and then that completed the last contract. So that was all four in under five minutes. That definitely seems like the easiest way to do this one. The next mission, Close Quarters, asks you to kill 50 enemies with a Bryson 800 with a sword off mod in Maozay Marsh. Kill 30 operators with a Bryson 800 with an 8 inch XRK close quarter barrel and then melee kill 3 operators with a Bryson 800 with a vulture claw breacher attached. So this takes a long time but basically the way I did it was I made a Bryson 800 with all 3 of those attachments on, the sword off mod, the 8 inch barrel and the vulture claw breacher and then first of all go and just kill loads of AI in Mauser Marsh. That'll probably take a couple of games because there's not always that many AI there but take a couple of games until you've got all 50 of those done and as you're doing it anytime you're fighting operators try to get the last shot with the shotgun what you can do is down them with a different gun and then just finish them off with the shotgun so you have to do it three times meleeing them to complete that objective and then just 30 operators where you finish them off with the shotgun i did it with teams i actually did a lot of this in building 21 where whenever my teammates down someone i asked them to not finish them off so i could run over and take the last shot with the shotgun takes a long time 30 operators is a lot of operators but you should get it done eventually the shotgun's not actually that bad especially in building 21 where you can kill a lot of the armored enemies in one shot which is really good the next mission humanitarian relief asks you to deliver 40 bandages to the dumpster dead drop inside city and then extract 25 self revives and 40 bottles of aspirin so just like all of the other ones this is just a case of finding lots and lots of things so finding the bandages check the hospitals check those little medical cabinets all over and you should find them but 40 bandages is a lot to extract 25 self revives like the earlier mission they have to be in your inventory so not equipped on you so it's kind of extra self revives if you want so 25 is going to take a long time and then extract 40 bottles of aspirin this took me maybe a week of playing so like seven separate days of playing before i managed to get all of the aspirin but just keep checking those hospitals check medical cabinets whenever you find aspirin pick it up ask your teammates to do the same thing and then eventually you'll get it i just had this mission on in the background while i was doing all of the others the next mission weight limit i actually made a whole separate video about because it is very very tricky it says X film with a full backpack and a full loadout eight times. Now it seems like this is super inconsistent. For some people, there's barely any requirements at all. You just need to make sure you've got objects in all of the different slots of a large backpack and make sure you've got a free plate carrier and then it seemed to work for people. For me, I needed to have loads of stuff in this. So I had to have free guns with full ammo. I need to make sure I had a field upgrade. I had tacticals, I had lethals, I had three pieces of armor in my slots and then I had ev a kill streak and then I make a gas mask, a durable gas mask, I think. And then different objects in every single slot of my inventory. I couldn't have any duplicates or anything like that. So this was a massive pain. Check out my other video if you want a bit more information. But bear in mind, I have had lots of people in the comments saying they could do it and I didn't need to have full armor or I didn't need to have full ammo or I didn't need 
t uh, lethals and tacticals or they didn't need to have a uh, durable gas mask or stuff like that so mileage may vary i would just try and play it safe and make sure you've got every slot at least filled in with like the highest level of stuff that you can find you can fill up your backpack with keys so if you've got loads of junk keys at this point you can just fill your backpack up with that when you go in and then you can extract very very quickly and get out without having to fill anything to loot it the next mission, Clean House, sounds very, very hard, but we did it on our first try. It was actually quite easy. You have to unlock and clear the Kushak Construction Warehouse, the Downtown Post Office, and the US Embassy Main Building all in the same deployment. So you need all of those keys, so you can't do this mission until you get a Kushak Construction Post Office and US Embassy key. These are all keys that you can buy from buy stations, so I spent a little bit of time in the games before just going around all the buy stations trying to find them. They're $30,000 each, they're quite expensive, but if you do find one of them, obviously it saves you a lot of time trying to wait for a random drop and then just keep extracting whenever you get one of them and then when you've got all three make sure you've got a team with you it really helps if you've got three people doing this and then go to the construction warehouse first i'm not sure if the order matters but i did it in order it says just in case that one's fairly easy to clear there's only kind of three big rooms to clear in there as soon as you've killed all the enemies in there then you can move on over to the post office so go to the city that one's quite big actually the post office so there's a lot of different space at the bottom of it and then you also have to go up the stairs and go up the elevator separately to make sure you get all of the different floors where a few more enemies will be hiding and then finally the us embassy you only have to do the main building so it's not the bit you can get in without a key sadly it's the main building just open that up and then you can go through kill all of the enemies just on the two floors there there's not actually that many enemies in that one and then that will be completed it sounds a lot harder than it is the next mission massive stock is currently bugged you can't complete the last objective of it so it says kill 20 enemies with a 556 icarus with a vlk kolos flash hider an ftac sb a vortex 90 and a corio presio factory attached in zyro observatory at 150 meters i'm not going to read that out every time then you have to kill 10 operators with headshots with that gun and then also kill 10 operators with that gun again at a distance of over 100 meters so the first part you can do fairly easily what i did was had two people on my team i climbed up the big sort of radio mast in zyro observatory and then i got my teammate to go hang around a place that was about 150 meters away because obviously you can ping to check the distance and then they tried to get ai to try and engage with them and then i could pick them off by setting it to single fire and just trying to get headshots it takes quite a while to get 20 enemies but we still managed to do it in like two games i think i probably could have done it in one game Killing 10 operators with headshots is very easy. Just whenever you've downed an operator, just go over and finish them off with a headshot with that gun. But the last part, killing 20 operators at over 100 meters, as far as I know, is bugged. I've only tried it once, but it didn't count the one operator I did kill at over 100 meters. And I've heard lots of people in my chat saying that doesn't work at the moment. When it does work, probably the best way to do it will be to go into Hunt Squad, and then you'll have a general idea of where enemies are and try to hopefully catch some people out in the open and use that single fire shot to try and kill them if you've got a teammate who can go and down people when they're out in the open obviously then you can try and get that headshot make sure you back off until you're 100 meters away and then try and finish them off with a headshot but that is very very difficult to do because obviously they'll probably give up or self-revive or something so it's going to be a bit of a pain but right now it's bugged so there's not even any point trying that one thankfully you only need to do five out of these six to unlock the last mission so the last mission for white lotus the last mission of tier 5 is the route forward this one is pretty easy to be honest but again if you've got a squad it makes it much easier so first of all you have to go to the alsherim pass dumpster dead drop this is the one in kind of the junkyard that's a little bit to the southeast of alsherim pass so go there you'll be able to pick up seven tracking devices and then you need to go to satik caves and plant seven tracking devices on the aq trucks there and then travel to the server rack in the bunker in satik caves and download the data we actually did this out of order so we went and picked up the tracking devices and then we found some of the trucks in satik caves i think i'd found two of them or one of them and then i actually went to the bunker and downloaded the data and then i went around and found all of the other trucks it helps if you have extra people because there's a lot of enemies in the caves there's a lot of really tough enemies you tend to get shot from lots of different angles at once so just take it slow slowly clearing it all out then any of the big trucks that you can't drive in the big trucks are there but some of them are inside the caves some of them are outside the caves just go up to them and you should find this prompt that says that you can plant a tracking device once you've done that to all seven then this mission should be complete and you have finished white lotus so if you found this video useful don't forget to like and subscribe and i will see you for the next one goodbye